One thing that we're not going to cover is this, this section spends a lot of time measuring angles in degrees, seconds, and minutes. So for instance, if you have 19 degrees, this is, a, this is an example right out of the book. 19 degrees, 47 minutes, and 23 seconds, and it will tell you to convert this into decimals. This is just like what you would do with actual hours, seconds, and minutes, if you wanted to find hours. Um, how many minutes are in an hour? 60. So that's exactly the number of minutes that are in a degree. So this would be 19 degrees plus, so 47 minutes would be 47 sixtieths of a degree. And then how many seconds are in a minute? So it would be 60 times 60, or in other words, 300 in, or sorry, 3,600 seconds in an hour. Same thing, 3,600 seconds in a degree. And so you would do this type of thing. And as far as I'm concerned, this is just a waste of time. Um, it's busy work. And this would, just so you know, this works out to be 19 plus point. 0 0.7833 degrees plus 0 0.0064 degrees. You add those all together and you get 19.7897 degrees. It's, if, if you're interested, there's plenty of stuff in the book to do with this. Um, you'll never see this outside of the trig class. Like you will have some questions later on this, you know, as we do applications and stuff that may give it in this. It says like a boat is sailing at this by north by northwest and then you'd have to do something with it. It's simple. I don't want to waste our time. So now the only thing that's left to cover in section one, there are two formulas and which is really odd for me. I'm not going to prove them in this class. Um, I do encourage you on page 407, your book gives two really nifty proofs for this. Like I, I think it's very slick. And I do suggest that you read them to go over them, if for nothing else, just to get a feel for how this book deals with some proofs. Um, and it's, it's really nifty. And so these are these two things that I'm, we're about to do here, we're, we're not going to, we will prove it, but it's not like rigorously prove it. We're just going to kind of derive what these two formulas are. Um, but the book does it, it's really cool, and we could do what the book does, but I don't really want to. Uh, I would like for you to read it though. So, one thing we want is on a circle of radius r, we want a formula for the arc length. The arc length is literally this right here, the, the length of the arc, and it said the length of the arc subtended by the angle theta. It's a fancy way of saying this picture right here. An arc subtended by an angle, that's what it means. So let's think, the, the really cool thing about this is the way that radians are defined, they're kind of defined to make this easy. So for instance, if the angle, here's my circle of radius r, and let's say that the angle were a full, what, what would this be all the way around? 2 pi. Thank pi. you, right. 2 pi. So if theta were 2 pi, what would the, I guess you would call it arc, or you could call it the circumference, it would be what? What is the circumference of the circle? 2 pi r. 2 pi r, r right? 2 pi times r. It looks as though all you're going to do is take the angle, whatever the angle happens to be, and multiply it by the radius. And indeed, that's exactly what it is. This is, and, and in a way, it's kind of like radians are almost made for this to be the case. Because think about how we, we talked about what a, what a radian is, right? One radian is the length that if you took one radius, so here you are at one times the radius, right there. If you go two radians, you'd be here and you'd be at two times whatever the radius is. At three, you would be at whatever three times the radius is. Here, you'd be at whatever pi times the radius is. And indeed, yeah, that's, that's the kind of the beauty of this. S equals r theta is the arc length of 
is the length of an arc subtended by an angle theta. Does everybody believe that? Is that like, it's, it's believable because it's like, it comes from the definition of radians. Like that's kind of why it is that way. Um, that's what makes it so nifty. So uh, there you go, that's it, S equals R theta. And then there's one more thing. So what's this guy right here? What's the area of this circle? The radius is R, what's the area? Pi R squared. Pi times the radius squared, okay. Now theta here is still equal to two pi, right? If we measured it all the way around. And the area happens to equal pi times r squared. What would half of it be if instead of making theta go all the way around, if we only went halfway, now I'm looking for this area, what would that area be? It's when theta pi equals pi r squared over 2. Right. It would be, you take whatever that is, it would be exactly half of it. And so you would divide by 2. It almost looks like. You just take half of whatever the angle is, right? When the angle was 2 pi, you take half of it and then multiply by r squared. When the angle was pi, you take half of it, multiply by r squared. And so in general, this turns out to be true, that the area of an arc, and so now we're going to say here's the a, here's the area of a, this is called not an arc, that's called a sector. The area of a sector subtended by angle theta is given by whatever theta is over 2 times r squared. The book gives two really slick proofs for this, and I do want you to look at them, but I don't want to waste time because all of this is not really trig. This is very, like, I want to get into, okay, so everybody got this? This is one of the formulas that's going to show up, and it's going to show up in this homework right here. Like, that's where you're going to need it, or, you know, because it is good to know. It, it's, this is good stuff to know. This is the other one. You're going to need to use both of them. I do want you to look at the proof in the book. It's really cool. Or the proofs in the book. And so now let's move on to actually start doing trig. And we have all of the preliminaries out of our way. Let's get into the bread and butter. So. <sighs> recall that if we had a right triangle, any right triangle, first thing to notice is that since it's a right triangle, this thing is entirely determined. We can think about it as being determined by one of its angles. Once you know one of its angles, you know the other angle, so you know all the angles. And so let's go ahead and give these lengths here, A, B, and C. And like we showed in class, that any one, any such triangle that you start with, say A, B, and length C with this theta, any other triangle that has at, sorry, any other right triangle that has one of its angles the same as theta, you could think about as being on this line and as we proved, the proportions of these things are off by a constant amount, no matter how big or how small you scale it. And the way that we formalized this was we said that there's a constant, as long as you multiply by a constant number, let's call it z, then this remains true. And this is the same angle right there, right? So in other words, given any right triangle with any angle theta right there, they, are, they have this type of relationship to each other. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, this is where it gets cool. Okay. I also want to get a concrete example here. Let's do this one. Let's say that I have this triangle here. Um, let's, instead of theta, let's give an actual one. How about pi over six? Let's say this is one. Then this would force this to be what? Two. Two. Making this what? Three, three. There you go. And let's actually scale this by some number. Um, let's scale it by, let's multiply, I think this is what we did last time. We multiplied everybody by two. 
This is still pi over 6. We multiply everybody by 2. 1 becomes what? 2. 2 becomes? 4. And this is? 2 times root 3. 2 times root 3. Right? Okay. So that's cool. Yes? Do you want this on? Do you want this microphone on? I do not. I <laughs> don't know why it's on. Thank you. So now here's the cool, this is, this is where it's really cool, is that something else between, no matter how much you scale this thing, the ratios of the sides to each other remain constant. No matter how big or small this is. We could have, we could have multiplied this by 10,000. And the ratios, now, you know what I mean by ratios. You take yeah. one side, divide it by another side. How many different ways can we do that with a right triangle? Let's see if we can figure it, like, I'll, I'll start us off. We could take that one over, the, there would be six. There would be six total unique ways. Now, it might be the case, for instance, that you have this guy, in which case this over this would be the same as this over this. This over this would be the same as this over this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But assuming that they're all different, in the general case, you can't assume that any of them are the same. Assuming that they're all different, then you have six unique ratios. In fact, and I want to do this in a certain way, so I'm going to go ahead and, and name them off. Let's, let's start with, I'm going to go A over C first. Then I'm going to go, how about B over C? So that's one. Here's another, B over C. Now, how about A over B? And now, you'll notice the only other possibility is really to just flip each one of these, yeah, yeah. right? And, then, and that should account for everything. I have C over A. I have C over B. Is this the order I did it in? This isn't the order I did it in. Oh, who cares? Um, C over A, C over B, and then finally B over A. Okay, now watch this. I'm not going to do it with all of them, but let's just take this one, where we take this one, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce this now. We're talking within all we've determined here. Okay, yes, it's a right triangle, so that's one thing. But given a right triangle, this angle is, is what we're going to base everything else off of. So with reference to this angle right here, this side is what we're going to call the opposite side. I'm going to write this all up. I'm going to put it, put, why don't I go ahead and do it right here. So given a right triangle, and once we've specified an angle, we could think about this as the opposite side. So I'm going to put OPP for opposite. What's this called? It's what we've always called it. It's the hypotenuse. So we're going to call it HYP. And then this is what we're going to call the adjacent side. And it's adjacent to that angle. If you're trying to figure out what's what, the easiest thing to do is look at the angle that you're given and look at the opposite side. You just keep going in that direction. Hypotenuse is always opposite to the right angle. And this is no matter how you want to draw it, right? Or another way of thinking about it is it doesn't have to be down here. It could have been up here. Maybe we gave the angle up here. In which case, this would be what? Opposite. Opposite. There you go. This would be hypotenuse. hypotenuse. And this would be adjacent. adjacent. Okay? And it, again, I, you're going to hate me for this. It doesn't matter how you choose to do it, right? Like, if this happens to be my angle, let's call it alpha, then this would be opposite. opposite. This would be hypotenuse, because it is opposite to the right angle, and then that makes this the what? Adjacent. Adjacent. Okay? So, so in this case, what I did is I went to, to theta, and I took the opposite over the hypotenuse. And now let's see what happens when I do it here. Opposite over hypotenuse is AZ over CZ. Can I simplify that at all? A over C. Which is exactly the same as that. Uh, okay. Ah, now let's see. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I go adjacent over hypotenuse, it's, it's still. And do you believe that it's the same for all of these? Yeah. yeah so and like, let's let's do one. Let's do one with the actual example that we have here. I'm going to clear this out, right? 
So just before I erase this, let's remember there are six possible, given a right triangle, there are six possible ratios. Doesn't matter how big or how small you scale, scale that triangle, it all depends on this one number right here. That one angle will determine all of that, regardless of how big or how small it's scaled. Okay, and here, so let's do one. Let's go, if I went, say, but this is my angle, and let's say I go adjacent, no, I wanna go opposite over adjacent. What's my ratio if I go opposite over adjacent? One over, one over, root, three. One over root three. If I go to this one and go opposite over adjacent, what is it? Two, two over two. Over two. Root. Does that simplify to something? One, one over root three. It's the same thing as one over root three. And just from now on, anytime we have a square root in the denominator, I'm gonna keep it that way. Your book, if you go to look at the, your answer in the book and that's your answer, like your book is gonna write it like that. Yeah. Okay, I don't care. You can, if you like to do that, go ahead. It's an extra step that, I, as far as I'm concerned, does not matter. Um, all right, let's do one more. Let's say, let's go over here and let's go, uh, let's go adjacent over hypotenuse. What do I end up with? Three, 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 over, two. Three, three over two. And let's go over here and go adjacent over hypotenuse. Three over, three over four. And can we simplify that? Well, it's four times. Is two times two, and you can cancel two. There you go. You cancel the two in the denominator and the numerator, and we end up with, lo and behold, the exact same thing. So this all follows from the very first thing, one of the first things we proved in this class, which is that, 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 it's, that these lengths are entirely determined by that, right? Or rather, now what we're seeing is it's the ratios of these lengths. That's why I bothered with this whole, this whole thing we bothered proving is that it, they're off by a constant amount. Each one is, of them is off by a constant amount. We can see that what that does is regardless of the size of the triangle, it makes these ratios entirely determined by that one number. And so let's say, just for a second, I want to make sure I'm have I missed anything that I want to say? Okay, yes, I do want to have this up here. In fact, this guy, I don't want. But we'll keep this guy up here. So we're all on the same page. It doesn't matter how the triangle is oriented. Once you've chosen an angle, then you've defined what the opposite is, what the hypotenuse is, and what the adjacent is. Now, so think about this then. What, what have we just found? That any time you have a right triangle, once you specify an angle, there are exactly six, well, I mean, you could do more, but there are six ratios that are exactly the same, no matter how big or how small you scale the triangle. So, it sounds as though we have an input-output relationship here, right? Like, given, if you think about this as an input, we could say then there's some function, let's just call it f, which takes theta as your input and returns, let's just say, opposite over hypotenuse. And in that case, right, in the case of, say, pi over 6, that function right there would take pi over 6 and give us back what? Uh, That's pi over 6. You just did this. And you, and you it, it, one, 1 over 2. Two. Because that's that, right? And so you know that if this function is defined to be the thing which when you plug in an angle, it gives you opposite over hypotenuse. It doesn't matter how big or how small this thing is, because you know that it's a constant amount, so it's gonna cancel out, right? If it's happened to be 10, 20, and 10 times root three, you would have 10 over 20, which is the same thing as one half right there. And so we have a function. This is a function. It, 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 it gives you, for one input, it gives you one output. And it's, de it's, it's defined 
right? There's not like any, well, maybe on Thursdays it's hypotenuse over. No, this is one of the, there, there are six ratios you could do with this that is entirely determined by this one thing. You choose any one of those ratios and you have a function. We give it a special name. We're not going to call it that. This one in particular is what we call sine. This is what sine is. Now, in your book, and in most texts, they don't put parentheses here. I'm going to require that anytime you do this, you use parentheses for a few reasons. One, you want to think about this as a function. There's your input to the function. The output is what you get when you plug that in and do the calculation, right? And so the same way that like last year, we had stuff like this, Or, right, right, where, where you had this thing, like your input goes here, and that entire thing represents your output, right? Like the same thing here, it's just instead of one letter, it's three letters, and we're calling it sign, okay? So there are the other ratios, which I didn't leave up. Is sign like short for something? Sign, S I N E. Sign. <laughs> That's what it's short for, sign. Like, yeah, so yes, it is. It is short for sign, uh, but that's what it's called. That's, that's what it is. So there are five others. There is cosine. Cosine, <laughs> right? There is cosine, but because, yeah, cos. Cosine of theta of any angle theta is going to be adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, abbreviated tan, tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. I'm going to give myself some room here. Now, remember how we did this before? Is I, I found three, and then I just flipped them. Well, that's all we're doing here. So that it's the multiplicative inverse. So it's not the actual inverse of this. It's not that I put in, I put in a pi over six and got out a one half, and so now it's not the inverse. This is just, in fact, we should not call it the inverse. We should we we could call it would be better to think of it as the reciprocal. Because oh. we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a second. We have the reciprocals of each of these. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. That would be cosecant, and we abbreviate it as CSC. Cosecant theta is then hypotenuse over opposite. Secant theta, so instead of co, you have secant theta, is hypotenuse over adjacent. And then cotangent, abbreviated COT, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Now, I just said that these things are reciprocals of each other. And so it is very true here that, oops, go ahead and myself, one second. So yeah, check this out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these guys up here. Now you think about it like this. This is what we're working with right here, right? Given this theta, right, or any theta, like opposite hypotenuse and adjacent are automatically defined, no matter how it's oriented, right? Question, is theta an acute angle or an obtuse angle, or is it a right angle? Acute. It has to be acute. Oh. Right, because this, since we're talking about a triangle, this is 90, those guys have to each be less than 90. Because if one of them was 90, well then you'd have this, and that, that's not a triangle, unless you talk about the complex. So it does, you don't want to know, right? Like, there is a way that it's a triangle, but we're not going to, that's not what we're doing, right? So, for right now, that's what we're dealing with. And for in this section, that's all we're going to deal with. Later on, we'll do something else.
Fine. Right now, this is how we're thinking about this. Check this out. Let's go one over sine theta, because I was just talking about reciprocals, right? So let's just think about what this is. This is one over what over what? What's sine theta? It's what over? Opposite over theta. So that's one over opposite over hypotenuse. So just hypotenuse. Oh. Which is the same thing as, right, divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so that's one times, I'm not going to bother writing that, how about hypotenuse over opposite. What's that? Which one of those cosecant. is these? Cosecant. Which is the same thing as cosecant theta. And so, this, right, is, or I'm sorry, yes, this is the same thing as 1 over sine theta. Ditto, let's go 1 over cosecant. 1 over cosecant theta is 1 over, what's cosecant? Hypotenuse over opposite. Which is opposite over hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. So we divide by that, you do the reciprocal opposite over hypotenuse, which is just sine theta. So it turns out that sine theta is the same thing as 1 over cosecant theta. Okay, ditto with cosine secant. In fact, I'm gonna write them up there. If you need a proof, you can do it on your own. Like, this is, this is very much true, right? One over cosine is the same as secant. You'll notice in this class, I, go, I, I painstakingly put parentheses every single time. I'm one of the only people on earth who does that. But I'm telling you, it's going to really be helpful, especially when you have something when when you have something like this, like say you add two angles together, and then you're going to add something else to this, say some number n. If you don't have those in there, that's going to be so hard to deal with, right? So, yeah. trying to do you a ton of favors right now by saying just do the parentheses every single time you do, every single time you do it, every single time you do it. There will be a, a place where we won't even write an input oh. at some point, like we'll just, but that's, we'll, we'll get there, and, but for right now, just always write the parentheses, okay? Now check this out, this is really cool. So ditto, I could, I mean, I could I'd just go ahead and do this. Same thing here, since these are reciprocals of each other, then they're reciprocals of each other. So 1 over, oops, one over cotan theta is the same thing as tan theta. And so cotan theta is the same thing as 1 over tan theta, by the same reasoning as before. Check this out. Let's do this. What's sine over cosine? So, okay, these are two ratios. What's sine? Sine is whatever what? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine is? Adjacent. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so it's which is? Opposite hypotenuse over hypotenuse adjacent. Oh, so just opposite over adjacent. Adjacent. And what's opposite over adjacent? Uh, it's, it's on there. Tan, Find it. Uh, tan, tan. It's tangent. It's just tangent. Ah, interesting. So, tangent is the same thing as sine theta over cosine theta. Therefore, since that's just one over that one, this is just cosine theta over sine theta. Right? So, we, it turns out that every single one of these can be written entirely in terms of just sine and just cosine. And we can see that right here. Cosecant oh. is the same thing as 1 over sine. Secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So that's why you don't see the other ones very right? Yeah, well, yes and no. Sometimes, I mean, they're... You're gonna, we're going to be doing something called uh, identities soon. You're going to have to prove trig identities, which means like you're going to get something like this. It's going to look like 
prove that this is the same thing, and we'll get into what that little two means. Prove that this is the same thing as like one minus sine two theta plus, and stuff like that. And it's like, like it's gonna get crazy, right? And um, the easiest way, especially when you're just stuck on stuff like this, is to say, well, hold up, I have a bunch of sines and cosines and tans. Why don't I turn my tan into sines and cosines? And then when you're dealing with things, it's, it's a way of making your, your stuff way easier to deal with, especially if it looks like this. <laughs> like, you know, and maybe you have another one down here like secant. And you're like, oh man, what am I going to do? Well, if you could turn everything that you see there into just sines and cosines, oftentimes stuff cancels out and your life gets easier. So it's just something to know that every one of these six ratios can be written in terms of just these guys right here. So sometimes you do that to simplify matters. Sometimes it's simpler to do it the other way around, you know, where now I, all I have is tans and cotans or something like that, right? Um, there you go. So it depends. You'll have plenty of practice with all of that. So, uh, let's see how we're doing on time. For the cotan, is it spelled C-O-T? That's a C, okay. yep, that's cotangent, so C-O. Okay. And you'll notice there's a sine and a cosine. There's a secant and a cosecant, and a tan and a cotan. And you might think, oh, well, wait a minute, why is, it doesn't seem to match up. Because you're like, well, if that's that, and that, this isn't, wait a minute, how is this related? <laughs> I'll show you, um, probably next week I'll send you, I did this thing on Desmos where it's all, it's, graphically it makes perfect sense. When you, when you see what each one of these represent as a length, you're like, oh, that's why, and it does actually work out. For right now, it doesn't make much sense how they, why they're that way. And it's, it doesn't in my head, even though I've seen this for years and years and years and years, and I've taught it for years and years, it doesn't make sense why it has, why some are co of the others and some are co of the others. and. That's, that's normal, so. And the way that we're gonna show you graphically, you'll never see again. <laughs> you'll never see that again. This is what's important right here. If you could remember this stuff, and there's a really, so you know that these are just the inverses of those. If you remember that cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine, cotan goes with tan, then really all you need to remember is this stuff right here. That sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that tan is opposite over adjacent. From that, you could derive this, and then you get all these other little freebies here, you know. But there's a nifty little mnemonic device. So, ka toa. So ka toa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Sokotoa. Sokotoa. Okay? So from there you get these and then all the other little stuff, blah, 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 blah. But that's really, this is the bread and butter of this class right here, is these six definitions sines opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, cosecant hypotenuse over opposite, secant hypotenuse over adjacent, cotangent adjacent over opposite. And we'll see what these six nifty little definitions of functions. We'll see just how useful this is. It's amazing how useful these six definitions end up being. So, okay, one thing that you're going to have in your homework. Um, so I wanted to do it this way. Okay. Okay, everybody got this? Can I erase this? Yes. yes. Yep, okay. All right, so let's do some examples. <laughs> let's say I wanted to figure out what is sine of pi over three. Well, sine of pi equals one, right? E so it's one third. I mean, no. E <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. What's the only way, what is sine? Sine is whatever what? Opposite over hypotenuse. Mm-hmm. And so, if we have um, this guy right here, what triangle are we going to need to draw? We're going to 36 to 90. Uh-huh. And so, if I draw oh, that guy... That's the 60 degrees. 
And so wait, what, let's do my, my outsides first. What are, what one, are these? Two, root one, three. One, two, root three. And is the pi over three, where does the he look? 60 degree on the top, right? On the top, okay. And so there's pi over three. And so, sine of that is what over what? Two. Oh. Uh, it's uh, root three over. Yeah, root three, root three over, over two. two. Okay, there we go. So I, I want to check. Sine should be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is that. Hypotenuse is that. So there's root three over two. So what's cosine of pi over three? Uh. One over two. Yes, because cosine is adjacent, and in this case, with him up there, adjacent is this guy. So that over hypotenuse is one over two. So what's tangent pi over three? Root three over one. I could write over one, I guess I'll do it. Yeah. Right, root three over one. Or just root three, right? Okay, so now, what's cosecant? Two over root three. Wait, no, no, no. Two over one. Right. Cosecant pairs no, with it's sine. Three. It's oh, two right. sine. over root three. I was thinking of cotangent. You're thinking cotangent. So let's do that. What's cotangent? Two. Two. Right? Yeah. Cotangent. No, no, no. One over root three. There you go. There you oh. go. <laughs> right? Because the way I get cotangent, I just think, well, that's just. You flip tangent, tangent's root three over one, so this is one over root three. And you notice how I've been writing this, right? I do the sine, cosine, tan, the ones that you have the nice mnemonic device for, and then I have cosecant, secant, cotangent, which are the reciprocals of each of these. That's why I chose to do it this way. You might want to organize it differently in your head or on your paper, whatever. Um, so what's Secant pi over three, two over one, or just two, whatever, two over one. I, can, I don't care we, either way you want to write it. It is just two, yes. Um, this, you're going to have this in your homework. You're going to, given a triangle, you're going to have, it'll tell you to find the values of the six trigonometric functions. And it would behoove you to write it out like this. Like, just while you're still learning this stuff, don't just lay, just write all of them like this. <laughs> Please don't do that. Like, tell me which one you're computing. If you just write this, 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 and this, I'm going to be annoyed. Like, really annoyed. Like, th this is so that you learn the stuff, right? Um, so, that is what you're trying to do for that. Now, let's make this, let's make this fun. Uh, okay, we want to do the same thing. We want to find the values of the six trigonometric functions of theta where do, 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 we have, that's what you're given. Hmm. So we can find the other length. Yeah, how do we find that other length? Pythagorean. Okay, which tells us that what and what and what is so what? 1 squared, a squared <laughs> plus 1 squared equals 3 squared. 1 squared plus b squared. Doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a is the thing we're looking for right here. And so what is that? What, what is it? So uh, it'd be root 8. Root 8. Mm -hmm. root so a squared would have to be 8. And you could do 2 root 2 or leave it as root 8. I don't care. Wait, Your plus, book. Well, I guess I was going to say it would be plus or minus. It would be, but we know that in this case, it's a positive value. If this were oriented on a graph somewhere, and it were something like this, that would be, we know that length is 1, this length is 3, well then it might make sense, it may, may, may or may not make sense to call this length negative root 8, maybe, maybe not. In some cases it will, in some cases it won't. It's good to know. So we're going to call that then root 8. And now, and again, your book will probably have it in there as 2 square root 2. I don't care. 
If you want to keep it as root 8, that's cool. Although, if it's like root 9, yeah. right? I mean, if it's a perfect square, do reduce it because you're going to annoy me. So, what's sine theta? Root 8 over 3. Root 8 over 3. So, what's cosecant theta? 3 over root 8. 3 over root 8. Okay. What's cosine One theta? 1 over 3. One, yep, yeah. one over three. And what's tan theta? Uh, root eight. Root eight over one. Oh no, one over root eight. Wait, root, root eight over one. Yeah. Oh, uh, eight. so tan. I, I always go back to this. So katoa t o a, opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent would be. Over one, yes, yes. Okay, now cosine. What's the pair with cosine? What's the reciprocal? What do we call it? Secant. Secant theta is then what? Three. Three over one, and then what's the pair with tangent? Cotan. Cotan would be one over root eight. Okay, pretty simple stuff, and that's all you're doing. Actually. Yeah, that's technically all you're doing, but then there's going to be a little something that might trick you up, and I want to want to go ahead and get clear up any. Go ahead and head this off and do an example. Okay, so everybody got that? You find it, these questions are going to be fine. This values of the six trigonometric functions. This is exactly what it's asking. And it's going to give you a triangle. So let's do one more. Here's another one that I can give you. Um, uh, what are we missing? B squared. B. Mm -hmm. Root B. Wait. B. No, 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 no. B. Just B. Wait. Capital. Well, uh, last time we, we were given a 1 and a 3. a squared plus <laughs> b squared equals c squared. Okay, if a squared plus, we're going to think of that as my b squared Wait, so is equal to c squared, what is what is b? Can How do we get it? Take root of everything. Wait, b. A, c squared minus a squared. There we the go. The square root of c squared minus uh, a squared. There we go. Now we take the square root and we find... You see, in general, <laughs> in general here. Now, is this a positive number? Could this possibly be an imaginary? No, no because, because a is smaller than c. A has to be smaller than c. Okay, so also you then square this. Root in, say, say again. Well, you took it's square root of something which can't equal. Me, right? Well, in as long as we're talking about planar geometry, yeah, that ain't gonna give you an, an imaginary number. And that's why I just wanted to check. This is a nice thing, because if you've taken a square root of something, and you look and you know it can't be imaginary, make sure you didn't do it the wrong way. Because if you have this, a squared minus c squared, and you're like, okay, I'm good to go, because you don't bother to write this out, you just look at it and go, oh, this is a squared minus c squared. Well, let's stop for a second and go, wait a minute, but a has to be smaller than c. So a squared is smaller than c squared. So then, uh-oh, right? Like, you might be in a world of hurt here. So. In general, though, if you're only given these two letters, don't bring in a new letter. Like, don't just, oh, we'll just call it X. Like, you, your answer should be in terms of the given letters, right? Just like before, we were given a 1 and a 3, and from that, we could determine what the other one was in terms of the 1 and the 3. Same thing here. You want this to be in terms of your A and your C. And so this is indeed equal to this right there. Wait, why couldn't this word cancel out? Wait, Wait, why couldn't this be root c of no c minus a? Because you can't split them with the minus. Oh, right. You can only split them with the time. Like oh, if it was yeah. c squared times a squared, then you could do that. Yes. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, last yeah, time. yeah. Remember, because. X squared minus Y squared is equal to X plus Y times X minus Y. 
And if you take uh, the square root of that, it does not cancel out easy, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so there's more to the story when you have that. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so now let's find the uh, values of the six trigonometric functions. Sine theta is uh, a over c. Right. And let's do it in an odd order. What's secant? Uh, that would be the square root of c squared uh, minus a squared over adjacent, which would be over a c over root c squared minus a. There you go. All right. So oh, see, secant oh, met, uh, is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we need to go in the other direction. Hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse is c adjacent would be this guy. Okay. So now let's do tangent. What's tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So a, a over, over root c squared minus a squared. See why I don't care about rationalizing denominators? Like your life would just get so ugly. Like it wouldn't be that bad. You would just do this. That's a lot worse. But still, like who cares? Like this is this is as meaningless to me as this is. <laughs> right? One takes twice as long to write. So let's just write that. Much easier. So, okay, that's what that's how we're gonna do this now. Okay, so then what's uh, oops, cosecant? C over a. a. That's C over a. What is cotangent? Square root C squared minus a squared over a. Yeah. Yep. And finally, cosine. Uh, square root 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 C square root C squared root 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 that one over that one. Yep. Okay, so the square root of these guys all over that guy right there. And there you go. So, um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Um, any questions on this stuff? These four questions are exactly these things that we've just done, right? It'll say find these right here. This, um, these, I, I have, oh, yeah, I'm glad I started, right. yeah, there's one more thing that we need, that I, I'm sorry, we, I meant to say this at the very beginning, um, so if we're measuring angles, I told you, we start on the positive x-axis, and we measure in this direction, and so this right here, that, would be, say, pi over 3. That's if we're going in the counterclockwise direction. If we went in the opposite direction, guess what we're going to do to that angle? Negative. We're just going to make it negative. Hmm. So we have to like the 7 pi over 3 right? It's the, It happens to be the same thing, yeah. right? So let's see, uh, 1, 2, oh. 3, 4, 5, that would be, it turns out that minus pi over 3 is the same thing as 5 pi over 3, right? So whether you're going that way or that way, they're the same thing. It's like 360 equals 0. Exactly. That's what this comes down to, right? I'm not telling you that, okay, now, oh, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. add that to that yeah. side. It's That's not the thing. case that 6, this, over, but watch what happens. 2 pi, the angle measure is true, isn't it? Right? And so, yeah, yeah, it's, um, but that's, that's all that means, and you're going to need to know that, because you are, I do want you, in some of these, you're going to convert radians to decimal, or radians to degrees, and degrees to radians, and some of them that they give you are negative like that, and I want you to just know, that's all that means. Negative 180 is the same thing as 180, right, all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure if I did or didn't give you one of these, but it's good to know. These are called co-terminal angles. Co, the same, terminal, terminate at the same place. So whether you're going 5 root 3, it terminates right here, or you're going negative, sorry, 5 root 3, 5 pi over 3 would be 5 pi over 3 would be co-terminal with minus pi over 3. 
And you could come up, you could just keep coming up with them, right? So if there's one, you're going in the minus direction, you go minus pi over three. We'll do that another minus two pi times, and you're right back to where you started. So minus pi over three minus another two pi is the same thing as minus pi over three minus six pi over three? Yeah? Yeah. And so that's the same thing as minus seven pi over three. So this is the same thing as minus seven pi over three, which is the same thing as we've just seen as five pi over three. These are called coterminal angles. And it might, I think one of the questions I have that, that I've assigned asks you to find like three positive and three negative coterminal angles. You could do this in radians, you could do it in degrees, right? So this is 60 degrees, that's the same thing as negative 300 degrees. Right, did I do that right? Yeah, because if you're going in this direction, 360 would bring you to here, minus 360. Walk it back by 60 and you're at minus 300. It's the same thing as 360 plus 60, which would be what, 720? No, that's 360 plus 360. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Something 20, 420? Yeah. yeah. 420. So that's the same thing as... 420 degrees, and so on and so forth. That's the only thing we need to know. Uh, but they're coterminal. They mean the same thing. The same way that 360 means 2. I mean, 360 means 0. The same way as 2 pi means 0. 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi. They all mean the same thing. Pi is the same thing as 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. No matter how many times you go in and either direction, you, an odd multiple of pi ends up right here. Even multiple of pi ends up right there. Yeah. Cool.